Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. Welcome, everybody, to the Calm Down Podcast. Erin Andrews is straight from the doctor. Her back hurts because she's been carrying the load and that NFL show for 27 weeks now. What's going on with your back, sister? We'll get to that after the break. Let's oh. talk first reaction of this entire weekend. The NFL still got it, huh, baby? Oh, my God. Well, I was going to say, I need some of your back medication because I was out of my mind watching those those four games, one of which you worked, of course, in Lambeau. We will get all the details from you. But unbelievable. I Arguably, to me, in my 40 years on Earth, the best weekend of football. I don't know how you couldn't. The first three games, all road teams winning on a field, you know, with a field goal. Um, and then that final game, the Bills Chiefs game, you know, the f- 25 points uh, scored in the final two minutes of the game. The stat line alone on Mahomes and Josh Allen was unbelievable in regulation and overtime. Two passing touchdowns each, over 100 passing yards. I mean, it just was. You couldn't script it any better to have the weekend end the way that it did. Obviously, heartbreaking for the other side um, yeah. and the team that that didn't come out victorious. But um, your game also incredible, beginning to end. Details we need them all. Go well. First, let's start with Titan Cincy. I didn't really get to watch it because mm-hmm. I was having some issues, and then we're getting ready for our game, and it's a whole thing. And then I hear during our game that they won it on a field goal. What's your biggest takeaway from that? Look, it's, you know, we had Jay Cutler on the podcast a couple weeks ago, and he mm-hmm. joked that the the question that he hated getting asked was what happened on that interception. Right. Well, I need to ask Ryan Tannehill what happened on the first play of the game that was an inter- interception, the first play of the second half that was an interception, and the last play of the game, which was an interception. So I need answers immediately, because to me, that defense, when Joe Burrow is sacked nine times, and the last time a, an opposing quarterback became victorious after being sacked nine times was 1960, I don't Crazy. remember. Remember what happened? Somebody pull up Forrest Gump because it's been a minute since that happened. Yeah. So there's no reason that Tennessee Titans defense showed up, balled out, and offensively, you got Ryan Tannehill is on you, man. I mean, I get it. The turnovers happen, but they cannot happen like that and that frequently. And then, yeah, it's unfortunate. There's always a, a losing team in that situation. But who day? I, I couldn't be more excited for Joe Burrow. We talked about it. We actually got some love and a little pickup in Cincy when we were talking about how pumped up we were about this offense, this team, this swagger. I mm-hmm. mean, this guy, what a total stud. Uh, I cannot wait to see them go to Arrowhead. I love it. We have a good friend, Jake Jolivet. I work with him at Fox Sports. He works on our crew. He was so excited. I'm Aww. pumped. For Cincinnati. I'm pumped for the Bengals. I'm pumped for the swagger. I'm pumped for Joe Burrow and his outfits. I'm into it all. I'm a buyer. I love it. Uh, you know what? I'm uh, My high school boyfriend, or not high school, my college boyfriend, Josh Rummins, shout out to Josh Rummins, went to hey, USC, Josh. actually was on the baseball team with Matt Castle, random. They drove around cute. in Matt Castle's cute volleyball player his, who ends up being his wife. So great yep. in that car Lauren. all the time. Uh, yes, exactly. Lauren but Castle, Josh yep. was the biggest Cincinnati Bengals fan. And I mean, think about this. The first playoff win their last week in 31 years. So for that fan base, I'm so mm-hmm. pumped. And this is coming from a Seahawks fan who we didn't have anything for the longest time. So I know what it does to the city. It injects life. And for Joe Burrow, I mean, this is a guy, of course, the number one overall pick. You know what you're coming into in terms of not having pass protection. You don't have a great offensive line. But, you know, I was listening to our friend Kyle Brandon. Good morning, football. It's like that cat got sacked nine times and just popped back up like a cat. He's like, all right. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. I also love their kicker. Yeah, you you heard Evan Joe. McPherson, Florida Gator. Excuse me. You know what he deserves? I don't have my other one. But oh, go my God. Gators. Of course, you know, Evan with the swag. I loved what Joe Burrow said when he was like, he warmed up and he was like, we're going to the AFC championship game, baby. Hot. I was like, I'm into it. So I don't want to ever it. be those people that jump on a bandwagon because we know who those people are. Mm-hmm. My bangles. Mm-hmm. My bangles. Uh, but for those team, uh, for the people whose fandom has stretched that 31 years, congratulations to you guys. I'm excited awesome. to see what they do in the in the AFC championship game. So let's move on to what happened after that game, which was our game. Your game. Um, Perfect conditions. It's freezing. (laughs) You can see your breath. I've got so many stories to come out of that game. But I'll be honest. I mean, uh, it's... You are... We do not pick sides. I don't care. Do I want it to come down to a game-winning play? 
I do. I, I want, like, everybody's always like, oh, Joe and Troy, they hate the Packers. They hate the 49ers. No, we don't. We just want a great game. Now, mm-hmm. full disclosure, and it's not hard to figure out, we have some friends that mm-hmm. play on different teams, but we have friends on all teams. That's the crazy mm-hmm. part. And, you know, after the game, I I think I, t- oh, I know I called you a little inebriated, but I was a little <laughs> choked up. And I was choked up because I feel bad for guys like, Devontae yeah. Adams. I feel bad for Aaron. I feel bad for Matt LaFleur. I feel bad for that defense that balled the hell out. But then on the other side of it, I'm running out on the field because I want to give Kyle Shanahan a big mm-hmm. ass hug. I sat on the field for five minutes and talked to Fred Warner with Tom Rinaldi and just was like, hey, I saw face. you in the back of Jillian's picture. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, so I was just like, Fred. Oh my God, go Aww. home and get some rest. I wanted to tackle Debo Samuel. You Debo know, I saw, Samuel, that cutie. Oh well, my God. I mean, God. T- Troy Aikman on air is like, he's be- he's become my favorite player. You know, I-, I grabbed Juice and gave him a big hug. So yeah, we have friends on both sides. And in the end, we're selfish, just like everybody else. We want a great game. It was a great game. I mean, it was what happened. And what I can tell you, besides all the things about the cold weather, I get hurt there, all the things, when they blocked that punt and returned it for a field goal or for a That's touchdown. A, mm-hmm. Aaron was right next to me by the heater. And I just went and I looked at him. He looked like he was going to puke. Aww. I've seen two players look like that before. Aaron Rodgers at that moment and Matt Ryan when the Patriots started coming oh, back shit. in the Super Bowl. And you're just like, God, like you just, you know, all the hard work. And again, nothing Uh against the 49ers. I'm into them. I'm pumped for them. But you're just, yeah, a lot of emotions. What were your thoughts about that game? Well, it was funny because the scene was awesome with this. Well, I didn't want to ask you the question that everyone and their mother was asking. How cold is it? Are you cold? Yeah, of course you're cold. But guess what? Like, it, it's that's, awesome. It's playoff of when the snow started to fall. So good. Um, I was w- watching it with my mom and dad, and I was just, we were so excited. You know, I, I act like, I don't know what you do for a living, but when I like see you on air and I get like all nervous and excited for you and everything, it's just, it's so, it doesn't ever get old. I imagine no. like divisional game, championship game, all the different times and the big stages that you've been there in those situations. I just look, you know, it, you would work the the Niners game when you and I and, and Trigger were texting about, do they put in Trey Lance? Do they not yeah, put in Trey Lance yeah. at halftime? And good for Jimmy G, man. You show up in primetime. You don't even have to throw a touchdown. <laughs> and you can still win. I mean, l- legitimately, but it's it's a team effort, that defense, as you mentioned. So, yeah, I I just cannot believe the NFC Championship game is coming down to two teams from the same division that know each other yeah. so well. Uh, this will be the fourth time this year that they will see each other. And right yeah. now, you know, the Niners have the edge. I also find it fascinating that the Niners have Rodgers' number. You know, I mean, there's just those, those certain things that... You're like, this is, you know, well, arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks to do it, most likely the MVP this year. And just some of those teams you can't work around. But yeah, no. congratulations to Robbie Gold, too, for a year that's been, you know, I remember doing a ton of different highlights this year of different kickers and so many missed kicks that those three guys coming up huge for their teams, for McPherson, Gold, and Gay at the, How about the first him three games. Amazing. Practicing field goals practicing as the starting lineup is coming out for the for the Green Bay Packers. We didn't see that as until we were getting on the plane the next morning. We flew back with Troy to Dallas from Green Bay. The next morning we flew Dallas to LA and it was all over like Bleacher Report, ESPN, mm-hmm. Robbie uh, Gold practicing his kicks as the Packers are being introduced. Onions. What? I mean, man's got to get his, <laughs> his kicks in. That's awesome. Where's Raftery when we need him? All right, oh Bucks, Rams. What are thoughts? Look, I was so ha- you know how you know whatever. I wanted I wanted the Rams to win, and I had you know for for the reason that I I love Tom Brady. I I know you love Tom Brady as well. You're yep. friends with him, but. I was so happy what he was able to do last year. And it was storybook ending, going to a new team, being able to sort of get that whole Patriots, you know, monkey off his back and show that he can do it with another squad. To me, that was the like Cinderella story. And I wanted somebody else 
to have that opportunity. And and obviously, you know how much we love the Staffords personally and Kelly and Matthew, but just as a football player and for him to all the pressure and that this dream team and the makeup and Von Miller, not just him, but o- o- OBJ and all these different guys that go there and you want to win. I w- I'm excited to see a different team have an opportunity to sort of write their own Cinderella story. So yeah. I, uh, I'm happy for the outcome of that one. Yeah, I mean, a lot of emotions running in our household, as you can imagine, because, um, again, friends on both sides of the ball. And um, I I think the cool thing is, you know, I yes, I I thought I couldn't believe the hole that they were in. I thought it was cool to come back. I didn't for the Kelly and Matthew side of things. I didn't for the Aaron Donald and how much I enjoy, um, you know, getting to know him and the Leonard Floyds and the Jalen's. Oh, my heart for Jalen on that one play where I was like, oh, thank God. God." I know. So, you know, that was a lot. But then we're tight with Robbie G. We love our, you know, Devin White. I love Shaq Bear. Just a lot of guys I cheer for on both sides. I love both coaching staffs a lot. Um, But yeah, I'm excited for LA. I am excited for the city. I'm excited for that whole group to get another shot. I, I was listening to Pat McAfee as I was running some errands today. And he made a great point about the 49ers. And I'm interested to know how much it's going to play a part. It could be a storyline huge in our game for me to look out for. They get in your head. Don't tell me they weren't in Rogers' head when they started uh-huh. to creep back in. Don't tell me they aren't going to be getting back in the Rams' head. Despite what, you know, Jimmy G may not be an elite quarterback like an Aaron Rodgers or a Matthew Stafford, but when they start creeping back in, they get in your head. And this is another thing that I can't wait to see in our game on Sunday. Matt LaFleur was very concerned about how physical that group was and mm-hmm. hoped that his team could just be as physical. They were in the beginning, but in the third and the fourth, I Wears think that's down. when the 49ers got the edge. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And then I, you capped it off. Oh, go ahead. No, sis, go ahead. No. I, well, I was just going to say, and then you cap it all off with Kansas City Bills. And I, I had to take a nap at halftime. I was exhausted. I tried to FaceTime you a few yeah, mimosas in. I couldn't in. talk to anyone. I know. I, it went straight. You declined it immediately. And I said, we're good here. Um, we're busy. I... I just, we talk about it all the time and this is so cheesy, but it's like, I fucking love football. And when it, yeah. those games, like in the every, the culmination of everything and, and even like, you know, Stafford with the rifle to Cooper Cup, when you know they're going to go to Cooper Cup, you know they're going to go to Travis mm-hmm. Kelsey at the end. Like there was just, winners find a way to win. And look, I feel bad for Josh Allen because if you're him, you did absolutely everything you could to put your team in a I position feel so to win. Bad for him. And the fact that 13 seconds was still way too much time on the clock. And my dad, my dad called it. He's like, they needed to squib kick. They needed a pooch kick. They needed to waste Oof. more time on the clock. But 13 seconds, there was a stat. There was like a thing that was going around. It was like Mahomes scored a touchdown quicker than it took Dak to get to the line of scrimmage. Like yeah. you drove the length of the field. And but in the end, guess who we went to? His guy. And it's just, I don't know. I just fucking love it. I'm so excited for you for this NFC championship. I'm excited that you don't have to get on a plane. Do you, are you happy that it's here or am I allowed to ask that? You're shaking your head. Again, no. uh, again, a couple of thoughts, right? I'm excited. It's LA. It's still, you know, a lot. I'm excited. That I'm going to do a sit down interview with Matthew Stafford. Fun yeah. little stat. I'm sure people have tweeted it. Sunday is the year anniversary to him being in Cabo with McVay. Oh, and that that's all cool. Coming mm-hmm. to How fruition, it went down. which is, mm-hmm. yeah. And him, you know, coming and, and signing with the Rams. So that's really special. But look, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. It, it, we, I think we all had it in our mind. Oh, God, we're coming back to Lambeau. You know, I, I know they were you the number one out seed. on your yeah. Instagram. Mm-hmm. Right. This will be the first time in how many years that we don't have a Tom and an Aaron. Twelve. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it's whatever. Those are people that, you, you know, I enjoy covering. But I, I'm pumped. I'm pumped for yeah. what we have on Fox. You know, I'm excited for what the AFC has going on. It's a lot. Football is king, man. It's just mm-hmm. king. It's I get to, I'm king. a dork. I'm like, get chills talking about it. Um, I'm also going to bother our network too. I want to, I want to go to the game and I want to hang with you. Like, why wouldn't I mean, you? I'll hold your clipboard. Go. Come on I the mean, field. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, it's just exciting. And obviously last year we saw it with Tampa Bay, uh, you know, advancing to the Super Bowl and winning in their home stadium. If the Rams were able to do it the same thing, what a cool story that would be. But either way, uh, it's why they play the game. So I know, I know. All right. What, what championship number is this for you? Do you keep track or is it just at this point? There's so many. I don't know. That's actually we'll a really good point. I think 2013 was my first year. Ryan, yeah. our producer, who was in the 2013 NFC championship? Ooh, yeah. Right. That's a Ryan question. Um, maybe 2012 too. 
uh, if you don't mind checking both of those and then getting back to us in the chat. So a couple of topics, anything, uh, what do you got going on? Anything fresh and new for this? You know, I have a list of things to discuss. Oh my gosh. Well, I have a lot of things to discuss. One's the most recent right before you got on here. And I know that you were running late because you were coming from the doctor. So we'll get to that. Yeah. I got locked. You'll appreciate this. This is just fucking the randomest shit that happens to me. I got my bathroom I've in my bathroom. Like I was shooting like a, you know, like a little like ad thing or whatever, because the bills I got to pay for themselves, you know. No. So swipe up. So no one needs to see a toilet in the background while you're in the bathroom shooting a tutorial. Thoughtful. Thoughtful. So, right. So I closed the bathroom door, which just has a toilet in it. It's its own little room. OK, shoot the tutorial. Swipe up. We're good here. Click the link. Go to open the door to throw something away because there's a trash can in there. The door's locked. The fucking door locked uh, from the inside. So now I'm having to MacGyver. There's like a lock on the outside. What'd you use? A, What'd you use? Baby, you know it. I went straight to the closet. Bobby wire pin? hanger. I tried the bobby pin. Then I thought to myself, this is going to get broken in there. It's going to be a problem. Straight to the wire hanger. Dry cleaning. Ripping the paper off. Unravel the Whoa. thing. I'm trying to fish it in here. T uh, it's not it's a work in progress because I had to run over here and do the podcast but yeah I will be damned if I have to call a locksmith over for a couple hundred dollars for this damn bathroom lock and I'm so stubborn you know me I'll use the I'll use the restroom down the hall before I use this bathroom because for I sure. can't hire the locksmith I don't have you do googled it. it I mean I guess this isn't helping like people who don't want their house robbed or you know <laughs> abducted <laughs> but I, d have you googled I, maybe I haven't I gotten like there's good tricks of the trade TikTok yeah. I don't know my password well, Kurt our other Lauren wonderful does. producer suggested using uh, the credit card and he said that's yeah. worked for him before my luck, the credit card's going to get broken. So yeah. that's what's going on over here. But just the nonsense. And I had the dishwasher guy over here. I have got all the issues. The dishwasher was broken. Ugh. He came to fix it. And he goes, oh, there's another part broken. I go, we didn't want to address that when we were here last week. Now, anyways. So I am, I've got my honey-do list that I'm filling out um, for myself. So all the tasks are going on over here. Fill everyone in on the back, including myself. What's the update? I I will. But first off, 2012 was my first NFC championship um, with Fox. And I have a great story about it that has to do with you. I don't know if you remember it. A couple of things I remember from that game. First one, I'm so excited. It's probably my biggest audience I've ever been in front of. Um, my boyfriend at the time, Jarrett Stoll, and I went to Intermix. Cutie. We bought a pair of shiny nude pleather pants for me to wear. I went all nude. Like, um, and a, like a beige, like, Oh, yeah, bold. And then, like, nude rag and bone. So I was, like, feeling so, like, cool and beige about myself. <laughs> so wore that, show up. Usher's on the field. I take a picture with him and Stray. Mm -hmm. You text me before the game, and it you were like, you know, congrats. I'm so proud of you. You've worked so hard. All the things. And I wrote, thanks so much. But Kim Zoliak Beerman is front row, and I'm freaking <laughs> out. Do you remember that? <laughs> no, because I can't remember anything, but that's exactly what I would say because we love her. her. That's so funny. Oh I my God. I was so excited. And then the Where year she by, Were you not wearing She by Sheree? Oh, no, shocking. No, She by Sheree. <laughs> and I didn't have my solo cup, but I remember being like, oh my God, I know this is so huge, but Kim is sitting front row for Croy. Um, and then uh -huh. my next year, 2013, hello, mm. Seahawks 49ers. That? Um, my eight year anniversary was last a uh, couple days ago with that oh beauty Mickey. Gosh. So, so crazy. Wow. Um, so yeah, a couple things, what you said about your house and then I'll get into my back. I cannot believe this is our last week of football. It's very crazy, but I am now entering, um, as we call in our house re-entry where oh, somebody's yeah. season is over and you have to coexist on an everyday basis mm -hmm. with your better half. And I know that may sound weird to everybody, but when you have been, and that's a, one of the many things I appreciate about my husband, for 18 weeks, he allows me to do me and be a messy person. And I have been doing that for the last 18 weeks. Mm -hmm. We have boxes. He has not bitched. He has not complained. But today I was given my warning. And it came what is through, it, How does the warning um, sound? Because Jarrett's so nice, of which... So nice. Is another the warning point. I want to make him writing this down. How did it, how through, did it sound? The, the warning came through Howard, oh, where how, he how. said, Mommy, Howie told me he's giving you one <gasps> week to get it all together. And Good then approach. we got to start moving. 
And mm-hmm. and I and he's not wrong. Like today, prime example, my carry-on, which caused my back injury, my carry-on is sitting in my closet. Great. I went to go get my deodorant out of it this morning because it kind of reeked. Went and grabbed my deodorant and then I just threw it back in the carry-on and I was like, I got it. It's time to unpack the carry-on. I got a home game this weekend. Mm. There's no reason to have the carry-on sitting there with the Ziploc bag of all my facial products and all my hair products. Baby girl, it's time to unpack. Mm. And we got a lot of things to unpack. And then tonight, like I know it's a game week. Physically. Yeah. All the things. things. (laughs) Tonight, I got to cook dinner. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Re-entry has begun. Mm -hmm. I feel like a goddamn astronaut coming back from outer space or like a space station for the last 18 weeks. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. But I like I I was told I would like something in the oven tonight. Not well, a bun in the oven probably. But he was like, I go, what do you want? He goes, well, maybe something that we put in the oven. (gasps) No, he did not. Meaning well, he's you know what? not going to grill. I should, I should be cooking for Jarrett. And I'll tell you why. Because as you know, your oh, cutie yeah. husband. This is, let me just tell you guys, for those of you that have never had the, most of you that have never had the opportunity to meet Jarrett Stoll. So my dad is- <laughs> and He's mom, America's my, guest. My, he really is. The golden retriever that he is. He is. My mom and dad have been visiting for the last three weeks, which is, I'm already going to, like, I'm having withdrawals and they haven't even left yet. Um, they're leaving they on leaving? Wednesday. Oh, God. And I'm so sad because most people I find know. their parents annoying or, like, they feel, whatever. My parents are the freaking best. Like, I would choose to be friends with them. They're my parents first always, but I just love them. And they also, they, like, walk the dogs. They take the, you know, yeah. they do all this, some of the shit that you don't want to do. Okay. So my dad loves golfing. So I text my friend and former colleague, Billy Bush, who's an avid golfer. And I text him and I'm like, hey, Billy, where should I send my dad to play golf? Um, and Billy goes, I insist he should golf with with Jarrett and I at the club that they, they belong to. Can I sound bratty and say the Bel Air Golf Club, the Bel Air Country Club? Uh, maybe I should. So I fancy. Know. So fancy. The, the reason I bring it up is because my dad goes, wow, I get to golf at Bel Air. Like so <laughs> cute, really cute. But it's just how generous Jarrett is. And so they had this awesome time. It was Jarrett, Billy, and then Chase Utley. And my dad just came back raving about his his time. So again, your husband, like I said, I should cook the meal for both of you because I owe you guys no. a big one. So sweet of him. All right. So re And then I heard you us. came and and picked your dad up and the boys ran out, Jarrett and Teddy Purcell. So excited to yes, see you. Yes, I did. I was like making a scene. They're like under construction. Like, I mean, like in the valet area and I like run and like jump on them. Like a total, like, no, no country club protocol happening here at all, but just so sweet. So, so good. re-entry. And then, so when does, how does this change for you? Oh, I have two, I have two questions because I'm sure people oh. want to know. And I don't know. How do you pick which sideline you're going to cover? <sighs> I don't know. I, to be honest with you, most of the time it has to do with, I'll be honest, laziness. If, you know, I'm in the middle of the year and we have two games a week and I, we have a couple of Saints games coming up, I'll just take the Saints sideline because I know them you know well. Them. I'm updated. Got it. Now That's I'm fair. just That's not going lazy. to. That's smart. Yeah, but you'd be shocked and Jarrett's shocked. I get a lot of crap for it. Like Why? if it had been Bucks Packers, you know that's really hard for me because yeah. I've got Aaron and I've right. got my relationships with the Packers and then I've got my relationships with the, the Bucks and even with this game. But it was funny at the end of the game, um, I ran over, like I said, to see if I could give hi- Kyle a hug. I wanted to say, you know, thanks to Jimmy and congrats. I was so excited to see Fred Warner and um, the PR staff for the 49ers goes, we'll gladly take Tom next week on our sideline because Tom did the sideline for the 49ers LA game. And then, you know, obviously, so yeah, they they get kind of bratty and superstition Um, and all that. But I'll be on LA sideline because look, I had it for that week 18 Mm -hmm. matchup. It's fine. Whatever it is, what it is. So that happened. And then what else? What else? So I was going to ask you, and um, I I asked this because if I'm, a listener and I've never worked the a sideline of an NFL game. I'm curious, like the process and especially now for you being a home game, when, yeah. like, how does that all work for you? And how do you compartmentalize different than on your road on the road? Cause like an athlete, you have a routine, right? And it's you can different get away. Where, like, you can get away on the plane. I always studied on the plane because it was a time to like put my phone away and be like focused my ADD. Yes. So how does that work yes. for you for your prep this week? 
Well, I could stay in a hotel and be a big brat, but I'm pretty good. Like I said, my husband knows when to leave me alone. The only time not to be a brat, well, I'll say brat again, um, that it here. really comes into play is in the morning where there's full-blown room service and oh. I can just order that, get all my stuff together. I don't have to walk Howie. I don't have to worry about Jared, all these things. So what's the room last- service order? What's the room service order? Oh, it's this gross. is important. No, give it yeah. to me. I love to eat. Everybody talks about that Uber Eats commercial. You'd never order that. Yeah, I would. I hammer a meal. And that's just, and you're five I love pounds to and eat. it's annoying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not. But um, so I I like to eat a lot in the bre- in the morning because when we get to the stadium, we don't eat. We we don't. Mm-hmm. We have maybe a crustable. We have like uh, <laughs> crackers. We just don't have anything. not sponsored, but should be. That crustable <laughs> gets so much air between you really and Jillian. pisses me off, by the way. <laughs> um, Those of you that don't know, crustables is just a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that Aaron yeah. loves. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't love it. I'm actually really sick of it right now, but it's just so easy to travel. You can throw it in your backpack. You can leave it out. <laughs> It doesn't get bad. It's not like they always bring us a deli sandwich. I'm not having a deli yep. sandwich. We know and what I'll happens. Tell you why. It ends up in the yeah. bag. Mm-hmm. I pack it in my bag. You can pack crustables and they're fine. Anyways, so the order is a scrambled egg, bacon, berries. I'll do a potato just for fun. And then I barely <laughs> eat it. And I don't really eat the bread, but I also do an avocado. I love a green juice and a coffee with coconut or almond. And that's it. Oh, that's, that, I, that sounds I eat a great. Lot. No, yeah, I love it. I, I love it. I'm. A, um, I never could eat before games. I would get too nervous. I would just do a lot of coffee, which is explains a lot. My fast paced speaking. Yeah, coffee and then maybe a piece of toast to like absorb some of the acidity. But it's been so long. Yeah. Fuck, if you ask me to work a sideline right now, I remember. I think it was during all the COVID stuff. Our boss over at Fox had asked me like last minute, being like, "Hey, if such and such." you know, isn't able to go, can you go work sidelines? And I was like, yeah, of course. I fucking, I don't even know if I'd remember how to work sidelines anymore. It's been so long. No, I but mean, seriously, it's all those black pellets, surgery. are those still happening in your shoes? Are oh, we getting those? That, that, why do you think I'm getting yelled at? I have, I'm on the clock. I have six days to get this going here. He has been <laughs> talking through Howie. I'm on the clock. I'm like, I did my, the next team selecting. Hysterical. Um, yeah, it's, it's no bueno. So yeah. Um, and then when, because I'm on the clock, I, this was a horrible transition. I was going to make a joke about my suitcase. So I (laughs) showed up hurt to Dallas this week. We flew to Dallas on Friday to fly in, um, like a prima donna with Troy on Saturday morning to Green Bay. Um, and when I flew there on Friday, I noticed my back was really tight and I do travel with a carry on that. I fling around. I I know. I need to start bending with my knees. I've been also trying to do a lot Bend of lower body. Snap. I know. Lower body, all the things. So Friday, I noticed going on the plane, my back kind of hurts. All right. I get up off the two-hour flight. I can't feel my leg, my left leg. And I'm like, is it asleep? Audrey's What's frozen going on? from the waist down. It's all yeah. part of the experience. I get to the hotel and I'm like, this isn't going away. What's happening? My lower back is now on fire and I cannot feel my foot. So I'm like, I'm just going to get in my outfit for dinner and see where this goes. I get into Troy's car. Aikman comes and picks us up for dinner. And I just said, I'm hurting. And he, he, Troy, who said his career ended because of his back. People speculated it was his head. He always said it was his back. Said, where are you hurting? And I was like, I'm having a shooting pain from my hip to my knee, and I can't feel my foot. And oh God, he looked at me, and he goes, okay. I got out of the car. I could barely get out of the car. And he goes, wow, you're really hurting. And I said, I can't feel my foot. And he goes, that's not good. Well, when Troy Aikman says that to me, I started bawling at oh, dinner. I was like, this is angel. so bad. My body is breaking down. What is going on? I get back to the hotel. I call Jared. I'm a mess. Granted, I have worked a football game two days after having half of my cervix removed. And I was like, I'm not missing this game. I am hysterically crying to my husband that I'm banged up. So then I start sending out text messages to the Packers. I'm like, I get you have a divisional game tomorrow and about (laughs) five guys that are questionable to play, but (laughs) is there any way I could get a doctor? My husband Uh did say to me, if they offer you Tordal, take it. Take it. What does that 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 do? Is it like cortisone or something? The injection that basically numbs you. So we get to the the stadium. We fly in. I'm like 
I'm texting Tom Fanning, who I adore. Packers PR, Uh-oh. love him so much. Beauty. Jason as well. Wallers with the Packers. They're trying to get in touch with the doctors. They're trying to get in touch with the chiropractor. Sweet. Nate the Great from uh, Packers training staff. I meet him right outside the locker room. They set up a chiropractor What time table. is this? I This is... I have to get in before four when the players are getting in. So it's like 325 and they're like, he can see you now. I'm like running inside of Lambo in 15 layers of thermal. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. I can't feel my leg. I don't know. Like, it's fine. Not that I'm going to catch any touchdown passes. It's great. They are snapping. Either did the San Francisco 49ers. Whoa. Um, it wouldn't have mattered. They only used Devontae in that game. It's fine. But anyways, they snap, crackle, pop me. I was twisting in eight different positions. By the first quarter, I started getting feeling back in my foot. It was awesome. I am going Jesus. to do a massive advertisement right now for Salon Paws. I remember Dan Salon Patrick Paws. used to talk about them on his show. Salon Paws is basically the best heating pad you've ever had in your life. Stuck to your body. They stuck it right on my lower back. It was so warm, Carissa. I put on that huge jacket. My whole body was on fire. It was in a great way. So not You're only did it keep keep you warm in Green Bay, it helped my back pain tremendously. How do we spell this? Like salon and then pause like a do- like a like a cat pause. I think like it's P A U S. Salon pause. They have them for every area on your body. Amazing. Nate with the Packers, who I adore so much, said, "Do me a favor, put this on your lower back." He was so cute, by the way. He had all these like little gadgets and th- Thera body Aww. for me, and I was like, "I love you." Then I was like, "But do you have any like drugs?" No, I'm kidding. They didn't <laughs> offer me any. Um, <laughs> But, Tortle. Uh, I Tortle. believe it's spelled I'll take an T-O-R. <laughs> but he said players use these all the time. And I was like, well, what kind of players? Like the linebackers? Like, give me like a beast of an athlete. But this thing, I slept with it on my back. The next day was still hot. It was awesome. No wonder these guys don't have to wear sleeves. They've got salon yeah. paws all over them. I want to get t- my paws on them. Meow. One thing about the Green Bay Packers, and I actually asked if I could interview the equipment uh, staff and just how they kept guys warm and not saying that it's salon pause, what they must be doing with these players to keep them warm and be able to function in that weather is incredible. I walked, this is my one note and it's unbelievable. What the factory, Santa's factory, they must have there for the Packers. Uh, The first like possession, obviously when Aaron scored and then we went to the other side of the field to see what San Francisco was going to do. You mean the first drive of the game and then nothing after that? First drive. Yep. That was the one I walked to the other side of the field. Um, one of the guys with the Packers, not a player, but obviously somebody who worked with the support staff walked up to me, handed me two pouches and said, here, put these in your pockets. I was like, what is this? Carissa? I mean, it was a stocking, like not a nylon stocking, but it looked like kind of like what, like maybe the socks, the thin, thin socks that the guys wear and pull up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm like made up as a pouch with a big knot in it. Inside of it was all those heat hand warmers. Yeah, the ones that you have to activate. Mm -hmm. It stayed hot for 10 hours. We were back on Troy's plane. He was complaining about his like shoulder. I had a back problem. I said, here, I threw it at him. He goes, oh my God. I had those in my hands, like in my pockets. I threw my hands in them. It was my hands never got cold. It was oh amazing. Oh my god! Look Those at those people it, are like elves. There, they know what they're doing. And well, Santa's yeah, because workshop. they're in the North Pole. They've got to yeah. figure out a solution. Well, I'm so glad. I mean, you looked adorable, all the things, but I'm glad that you were actually warm because yeah. no one else and able to feel my foot. Oh my god! You and Troy are on the IR. Well, so I, on a scale of one to ten, ten being the strongest. Where's our pain now with the back? We just went to the doctor, which why, sorry, I held you guys up, but he's good. Plan. He, we adjusted, we worked, he did the old elbow and my rear end and like tried to grind out. It was something it. joint was out of place. Great. Okay. Okay. Um, Ryan, our wonderful producer just told us it's spelled for those of you that are having um, pain oh. all over S-A-L-O-N. So salon and then pause P-A-S. Not I'm an ad, you. but should be, as you like please, to say. Please, please buy time on our show. These things oh are incredible. God. Speaking of time, um, we have a little time left to recap. So, Aaron, I know this was an, a big point of yours. You made it on our Instagram, um, Insta stories the other day. You made it a point of emphasis. You wanted to stop saying the word like. Uh, I have been listening as as Kurt. I've said it a lot. No, no, or else he would have buzzed you. You've really no. made a concerted. You didn't say it. 
I did. And I listened back to our when? Cam Jordan interview and I said it a lot. I'm going to, I need to start paying attention. When I get excited, I don't pay attention, but it's like right there, right there. Boop, boop. See, I, well, then I have a problem. I'm not a good monitor because I didn't think you said it at all. Here <laughs> I am giving you praise for not saying it. Every time I go to begin a sentence or something, I bring it up. I don't need to say that. She did. We just didn't do the buzzer this time because we... Uh, Darn it! Okay, okay. so right, yes, we'll do one of my time. New Year's resolution is to stop saying like every single sentence. We're going to start yeah. it next week. I don't know. Do I? I probably say it a lot, too. I'm just not cognizant of it. I say uh a lot. Uh, I do, too, but I can't too, eliminate both things in my life. I have to okay, just I'll concentrate on Okay, I'll work on uh on and you one. work on like. Okay. Okay. All right. See? All uh, right. Yeah. It's a but, space filler. It's a space filler is what's going on there. I don't think that sounds as uneducated or as valley girlish as like. I know where mm. I picked that up from. And I continue to hear people. This is what changed <laughs> She's my She's calling out Jillian. <laughs> no, I, Jillian does oh. do it. But I'm not, uh, hey. No, I... Um, I sat next to a woman in the hair salon and I texted you the whole time and everything was light. And I just thought to myself, I don't want to sound like that. You know who I want to sound like? I want to sound like Melissa Stark. Mm -hmm. She sounds classy, broad, educated. All right, we'll work on it. You know what? You can't be perfect. You're close, but, you know, we can always strive to work on something else. I will work on my us. And action. Okay, so we have a huge week coming up, especially for you. I'm going to hold your clipboard and Cute. anything else you need for me to help with the NFC Championship game. You are also working on reinstating your, what do we call it? What, what's your, in Jared's word? Reentry. Reentry mm. into your relationship. Okay. I have six days left. Okay, I'm going to go through withdrawals because my parents are leaving and then Aww. I am getting into a full on. I'm going to start having to go to Nashville. I got to tell you about that, too. I'm in a, a full debacle. I got offered to rent my house out for a year. Do I haven't it. even. I know I, this is the conundrum I'm in. So if anyone out there has given your house up to long term renters, I want to hear the horror stories or the good stories from it, because who wants to turn away money? Okay, I'm not made of money. No one. And I would love to subsidize my income but with renting this out. But then I'm also like, do I want someone sleeping in my bed? I'm going to have to buy a new mattress. I get grossed out on that. Like, do I want them in the sheets? I've never even lived in this house. So I This is really... what we got offered for Montana this week. Fuck. I'm going to give it a whirl and just see how she goes. Are you doing it? Are you renting it? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. But then I'm going to tell you one person that puts a bad mark on our house, what, like you a know, wall, my and... husband's going to lose his mind and... Oh, did I do like? Did you guys just buzz me? No, oh. I was. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I was. I was saying this is. This yes, is Ryan buzzed me. Oh, I said shit. like it. Shit. I didn't hear. Well, keep doing it. It's the only okay. way I'm going to learn. Yeah. The second somebody <laughs> puts a, wall, a mark on our wall, my husband's going to lose it. I know this is going to be. And this, so the person that wants to rent, they have three kids. Fuck. That white couch doesn't stand a chance. So I don't know. I need to think about it. So anybody out there that's rented their house, please. I want all the good, the bad and the ugly because I've got to make a decision ASAP. And then I'll be staying with you because I love where to live. Security um, deposit, right? Buzz yeah. her. She said, um, ah, uh. no, it's not. Um, it's ah, uh. oh, uh, like I do that on air when I'm, when I forgetting where I'm supposed to be going next, I buy yeah. time with the word. Uh. Yeah. I'm like, uh, so Coach, what are your thoughts? Meanwhile, totally. I had no thoughts. That's exactly why I said coach. Yeah, my season's over. I'm done. So I'm just going to come help with anything that you have. And I'm excited for you to work your ninth NFC Championship game. Is that what we determined? Cute. Amazing. And be excited for the week that was. Take care. Health is wealth. As I've learned from the appendix situation this year, from the stress yeah. of the mouth situation, you have nothing if you don't have your health, Missy. Or can't feel your foot can't feel well, I know God, look, I've been I mean I've been a disaster this year in those areas so um that's all I got sister what else we got I'm just laughing because when I called Jarrett hysterical on Saturday, Friday night to say well Troy says that's not good he said well Troy's been tackled a good 8,000 <laughs> times you're not go I was like Mike like I said it I said my career's over I'm not gonna get he's like, <laughs> oh god <she's> like, dramatic <laughs> I would just said you're not Jared. going to catch touchdown passes you're doing sideline reports very very beneficial for your job but 
Can Ugh. someone talk to Joe Burrow about his recovery? I want whatever that kid's having because yeah. that dude being able to like recover and just pop right back up. What a beast. And how cute is he? Last note about Joe Burrow when he has the sun and he has his glasses on and the reporter's like, oh, why are you wearing those? He's like, I don't know. I thought they were cool. Good for you, Joe Burrow. Exactly. You who day? You know who Good day for are? You. Day you. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. I love it all. Um, un freaking believable uh, week of football. And I hope it gets even better this weekend. We will be watching. We will be there. And make sure you guys subscribe, all the things, and check out our Instagram. You're really good about posting stories. I will be better. I know I keep saying that. And uh, merch. Don't forget our merch. Calm Down Podcast merch. Link in bio. And if any of you guys have any tips about re-entry or mm -hmm. cleaning your shit up that's been sitting there for 18 weeks, DM us and let us know. And renters. I need some info on that. All right. Love you all. Bye, E. Like, bye. Like, bye. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.